All right, all right, all right. We are building an audience for you now. Welcome. All right, so I tried to record this a little bit earlier tonight, but I had technical difficulties. I am using a different camera, so if for some reason you can't see this or something's going on, please leave it in the comment box below so I'll understand. But uh, definitely thank you so much for joining tonight. You're going to learn a lot. Um, I'm excited to share this with you. And what we're going to talk about tonight is what did happen on October the 7th. Why was that a day of concern? What is to be expected on October the 12th? And also future events. Now, keep in mind that every single thing that I share with you is 100% based on scientific facts. As always. Understand, you can do your own research. I'm taking the time, the effort, I'm studying this. I've, I've learned a lot about earthquakes, asteroids, you name it. I find it fascinating. I want to share it with you. I want you to learn. So if you gain some knowledge from this, definitely, definitely share this information with others. But take it one step further. Do your own research. Come up with your own conclusions. Do not believe everything you hear. All right. So what did happen on October 7th? Why was this a day of concern? All right, so what we've learned in the Bible was Revelation 12, verse 1, was fulfilled on September 23rd. All right, I'm going to share this with you guys. Hopefully you can see it. All right, so let's talk about the woman Virgo. All right, there we go. So on September 23rd, it said, and Revelation 12, verse 1, and there appeared a great wonder in the heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. So remember, guys, Leo right here, Leo has nine stars in it, plus the three planets. I know it's kind of hard to see. Venus, Mercury, and Mars we're in a perfect alignment. In fact, it was so perfect, it was identical to Orion's belt. And many of the pyramids around the world are all talking about Orion. My question is, what if they were really talking about September 23rd? Very, very interesting. That did happen. As we move down here, we can also see we have the moon at her feet. Now, understand, guys, that these things always happen. The moon at her feet happens like once every 13 years. However, when she was pregnant with Jupiter, now Jupiter right here, here we go. Jupiter is also known as the Christ baby. The reason why, again, because Jupiter has stripes on it, like Jesus Christ has stripes, also has a red spot, which represents Jesus's uh, spear wound. Also, Jupiter sucks up all the bad things away from Earth. It takes a beating for us. Everything from comets to asteroids, meteors, any kind of debris, it gets sucked into Jupiter. So Jupiter, in essence, does save Earth. All right. Now, it says she was being with child, cried traveling and birth in pain to be delivered. And then there appeared another wonder in this heaven. Behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. So if we look right here, there's a constellation called Draco. Now with Draco, it is a dragon. That's what it's always been. Now, over here in the same constellation, you have ten horns, which are aimed at Jupiter, which again is the Christ baby. You also have the seven crowns on the seven heads. Now, the thing that makes it really interesting is this. It says, now watch. This is really neat, guys. It says, and his tail drew the third of the part of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. All right. So keep in mind that on the same exact date as October the 7th, when Christ was actually born from Virgo, which was two weeks after the fulfillment of Revelation 12, verse 1, <laughs> there was the Draco, which is the dragon, meteor shower that happened the same exact time. The same exact time. I mean, immediately as soon as it was born. I took screenshots um, to show you. So here's what it looks like. So on 
October the 7th, Jupiter, first off, was going back and forth inside the womb for a total of exactly 42 weeks, which is the same exact amount of time it takes for a human uh, to be, uh, or a woman that's pregnant with child. Pregnancy for a human is 42 weeks. Jupiter was inside of Virgo for 42 weeks. It went into Virgo back in November of 2016. It was released on September the 23rd. However, it never crossed the line. This right here took two weeks. So this, this happened on October the 7th. Now, here's where it gets interesting, guys. Everything from the past happens in the present and happens in the future. God's amazing. Here's why. <laughs> All right. Because this also occurred on a very special Jewish holiday, as always, the Feast of Tabernacles. However, what you don't know, which is really interesting, or you may know, scholars believe that Jesus Christ was born during the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, granted, that was over 2,000 years ago. You get my point? The events up in the sky, the Bible says, look up to the heavens to see these magnificent events. Understand this. This is not astrology. This is 100% God. It is science. Um, again, I do use two things just so you understand where I'm getting this from. I use the Bible, the Holy Bible. And then I also use science. I use science because God to me is science. God is divine intervention. Everything is here for a reason, and the reason is because of God. The time is now, people, and I'm trying to bring something very serious to your attention. I told you in the very last feed, the earthquakes are going to pick up starting after October 7th. Well, let me share with you some facts. Again, this is 100% scientific. This is the truth, as always. <laughs> All right. So here's the deal, guys, from October the 1st. And you can research this yourself. In fact, I encourage you to do so. So on October the 1st, all the way through uh, 4 p.m. today, on October the 10th, there have been a total of 92 earthquakes. And I know what you're thinking. Earthquakes are common. And you're right. They are. So I narrowed it down to help you guys out. Here we go. All right. There was a total of 92 earthquakes since October 1st up until October the 10th. These earthquakes had a magnitude of 4.5 or higher. Now, here's where it gets freaky, guys, and do your own research. From October the 1st up until the 6th, there was a total of 51 earthquakes. From October the 7th, the Christ baby's birth, until October the 10th, there was 42 earthquakes. Now, granted, these are all 4.5 or higher. If you do the math... There was about 7.2 earthquakes per day. Here you go. After the fulfillment of October 7th, the earthquakes picked up 100%, 100% more. Here's what happened. They had an average of 14 earthquakes per day, 4.5 or higher. Prior to that, it was only 7.2. The earthquakes that we just encountered over the last three days had a magnitude up to 6.7. As a matter of fact, five of the six earthquakes that are the most strongest earthquakes, five of those were 6.2 or higher. In the past, it was 6.1. Are you starting to understand? Are you starting to piece this together? Because you can do so much more if you just put your mind to it and do your own research, but don't keep it to yourself, you got to share this with others because it's going down and it's happening. All right, I'm going to tell you why I'm using this phone. Oh, did I tell you what else? Wait, wait, let me see here. Hold on. Um, make sure I said everything. Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, there's dates and 40 days. Well, okay, I'll just share this with you real quick because it's neat. Okay, there was exactly 33 days from the solar eclipse on August the 21st till uh, Revelation 12, verse 1, which was on September 23rd because 33 is a big day. I mean, that's a big number. It's when Jesus Christ died and this and that. Um, the holiest day of holies was celebrated on the Day of Atonement, which was exactly 40 days after the great eclipse. The Feast of Trumpets, so you guys understand, is a celebration of the 40 years that it took uh, the Israelites in the, in the wilderness. And 40 has a very significant meaning. 
I told you over a month ago, there's two dates to be concerned about. I told you October the 7th. Well, I told you many dates, the 23rd. Then I told you the 30th. And then I told you the 7th. And every time I tell you this, I am constantly coming back after the event and I'm sharing with you scientific evidence. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about October the 12th. Why is this truly a day of concern? All right. So I'm going to share with you, I did a whole study on asteroids and here's what I think is happening here, guys. Um, we do have an asteroid. It is the size of a house, the composition more than likely is iron. Um, the lowest that I've seen it in my studies, and I'm going to share with you scientific evidence. You're going to see it live right here. I'm going to show you a live feed of the asteroid and how to read it. It's going to be interesting. You're going to love it. Um, that's why I switched phones so I can show you that. But um, what we know is it's going to end up being about fourth. I'm not going to get in the math with it. I've already did that in the previous video called uh, How to Understand Asteroids. Um, but we, we're looking at about 4,500 miles roughly from the uh, from the surface of the Earth. So again, that's going to be the same distance as going from Florida to Hawaii or Florida to France. All right. So at a velocity speed of over 30,000 miles per hour, it, depending on the angles, and there's a lot more to it, I don't think it's going to be a threat from the, uh, the trajectory that we see already. The moon just barely, it, it just barely goes by the moon. Here's what I think is going to happen. I don't think the asteroid, I think the asteroid threat is real because I studied it and I understand it. And I'm going to show you a live picture of it here in a second. But I believe that on October the 12th, because it is a day of concern, it's not going to be because of the asteroid. I believe it's more than likely going to be God's glory and wrath. More than likely, I think the volcanoes are going to go, big earthquake. I think it's going to be something different. But I think it, it drew attention to that day to, to make people wonder about that day. So when something did happen, they would know it's an act of God. All right. So um, that's that's just what I'm going by only because... The, with the with the with the earthquakes intensifying just like I said and studying it and looking at it and and, and trying to figure things out that is an opinion um, we'll see what happens um, and I got some really interesting stuff to share with you at the very end of this video but let me just show you this real quick hopefully you can see it all right let me get my camera steady hold on hold on guys All right, so I'm going to go into Earth. I'm going to blow that up some. Now, the green dots, I'm trying to keep my hands still. I'm sorry, guys. Wow. It's going to be hard to show you, but the green dots are asteroids. Here, the white dot, I don't know if you can see it. This might be too hard. Let me see if I can get it further. Let me see if I can do it further away. Maybe not. Wow, that's too bad. Hold on. There's the, okay. That's the asteroid name, 2012. Now watch the distance. It's 0 .0047 AU. Now remember, AU is an astronomical unit, which is the distance from the center of the Earth to the sun, which is approximately 93 million miles. The difference going from the sun, the center of the earth, to the surface is 3,600 miles. Now let me try to bring this in. Hold on. And then I'm going to fast forward it for you. Hold on. We're going to get this, guys. I'm determined. Hold on. This is like playing a video game or something. Gosh darn. Okay, hold on. Maybe this won't work. Okay, this isn't going to work. All right. Well, anyway, that's called Asteroid Alert. Why don't you go to Google Play Store and download it yourself? It's called Asteroid Alert. You And, and what I wanted to show you, and unfortunately it just looks like a bunch of lines, is if you if you look at it there's more asteroids around earth than anywhere else and as i mentioned in the previous videos there's more asteroids closest to us than ever before so is the asteroid threat real 
Yes, is something going to hit us? More than likely not, okay? However, they did not know about the asteroid that hit in um, 20, I think it was 2013 over in um, Russia, uh, which was much smaller than that, and it did um, 1,200, we'll put it this way, 57 miles was pretty much devastated or destroyed, so um, that was interesting. Okay, so what we talked about, oh, here, let me just show you this real quick. Okay, what you're looking at here, these are the earthquakes I was telling you about. 6.7, that was on 1010, 5.0, 6.3, 10, Remember, I told you these are 4.5 or higher. So let me flip the page over. So on this one, we don't have any, they're all, they're, they're, you just have to take my word for it. There's a whole bunch of them, but hold on. I was trying to, I was just trying to get the big ones here. 6.1, there you go. Here's a couple more of them. And this was on the 8th. This is the day after the 7th. So do your own research, guys. Find out what's going on. All right, now I've got some really bad information to share with you. You're not going to like it. I know I don't. God forbid me, forgive me, but um, it's my due diligence to share it with you because we are talking about the end times. We're talking about revelations, and um, it's important that you understand what's happening out there. All right, so here's the deal, guys. Um, Okay, let me let me let me let me bring you now to future events. Okay, so then you're going to have what's called the tribulation. Now, a tribulation is going to be seven years where basically this great there, there's going to be disasters on Earth. It's going to basically transform our whole entire system. So, it, in the last episodes, I was talking about the um, polar or excuse me, the magnetic pole shift. I was talking about this and that. So, if there was a disaster or something that were to happen. America, our government, the U.S. government already has everything in place. Now, what's going to happen is when there's nation upon nation and war and this and that, you're going to have this great ruler come out of the Middle East. That's going to be your sign, guys. And basically, because the whole entire system got messed up with this natural disaster stuff, uh, he decided that it's the new world order. And the first three and a half years are going to be great. However, in order for you to buy food or uh, take, you know, buy food, rent, money, anything, you have to have that chip in your hand. Now, you've seen it on the news. They already got the chips out there. So for the first three and a half years, it's going to be good. Now, after the three and a half years is there, and there's a lot more to this, um, basically, this great leader that you guys believed in turns really, really, really evil. And it gets to the point for the last three and a half years that if you don't have a mark, on your hand you're done and see the thing is god gives us all something called free will the free will means you have the right to believe in whatever it is you want so when they ask you to get the chip they can't force it on you they can't put you in a chair tie you down and make you take it <laughs> that's breaking the rules it doesn't count you have to say yes or no or not take the chip so guess what happens after three and a half years of this you don't take the chip you're dead you're beheaded you're gone. You're a problem. However, biblically speaking, anyone that takes that chip, there is no forgiveness. You are 100% condemned to go to hell for eternity. That's the difference. That's why you don't want the chip. Now, here's what the United States government's doing. Hold on, guys. Hey, I'm going to read this to you as you're looking at this. Okay, what you're looking at right here, I'll start over here. Um, there are over 800 concentration FEMA camps right now in the United States of America. They are all fully operational and ready to receive prisoners. They are staffed by Americans, Russians, Chinese. They're also surrounded by full-time guards, but they are all empty. These camps are to be operated by FEMA, which is the Federal Emergency Management Agency, should martial law be implemented in the United States? Martial law is when the habeas corpus to have trial by jury is suspended. Instead of going to, to instead of going to a judge, you go straight to jail. Now the camps all have railroad facilities as well as roads leading to them from the detention facilities. Many have an airport nearby. 
The majority of the camps can house a population of 20,000 prisoners. Currently, the largest of these facilities is just outside of Fairbanks, Alaska. They have a massive mental health facility, uh, facility that can hold approximately 2 million people. Now that's FEMA. All right, guys, it's getting absolutely insane. And I'm telling you, the time has come. You have a purpose for being here. You've waited your whole life for something. And this is the something. The something is now. And you have to take the initiative to go out and seek your own knowledge. It's so, so important. All right. So I'm not trying to scare you. What I'm trying to tell you guys is, God forbid, no, I hope that when the rapture comes, I'm gone and I'm not here for this seven-year thing. So if any of you guys are and you want to understand what's happening between now and more than likely the brand new first of the year, something major is going to happen. And I'm not trying to put fear into you because the Bible says only one third of the earth will be destroyed. It doesn't mean it's going to be, you know, it's just you got to have faith. You need to pray. But the time is now. There's no more. Oh, I think I'm going to wait. I told you on October 7th, something, the day of concern. I told you about September 30th. We talked about, and I told you ahead of time about September 23rd. This is not me, guys. This is the Bible. This is scientific evidence. This is facts. This is what's happening. So the choice is, do you want to be a horse? Do you, do you want to believe whatever people tell you? Or do you want to stand up and, and, and do something about this and share this information with others and seek your own knowledge and gain wisdom? Because, as I've told you before, you can bring a horse to water. You can't make him drink. So keep your eyes open. Seek knowledge. Truth will be yours. It's waiting for you if you only look for it. Good night.